So dive in. Explain the how and the why of sweat for us. Um, sure, yeah. I mean, the fact that we sweat at all is actually pretty special. Not all animals can sweat, and even if they can, if they're hairy or furry or covered with feathers, then sweat doesn't really work very well to cool them down. And that's the why of sweat. We sweat to cool our body temperature down or, or keep our core temperature within a, a set limit. Um, if we didn't, we'd basically cook from the inside out. So being cold, being hypothermic, is bad for you, but not as dangerous as being hyperthermic, too hot. Um, you will, you know, a core body temperature that's seven or 10 degrees above normal is quite quickly fatal. So if we didn't sweat, we'd die. As for the how, it's relatively simple. There are sweat glands in your skin. They take the liquid part of the blood and uh, actually exude it out onto your skin. That liquid sweat, uh, it, it evaporates. And as it evaporates, it cools the skin and it cools the blood vessels uh, that are at the surface of the skin. And the blood in those vessels then radiates down into your core and it cools you down. So even though sweat is crucial to survival, we still spend about $75 billion a year trying to buy antiperspirants and deodorants and stuff to convince people that we don't sweat. Yeah, it's true. And we do sweat all over on a really hot day. You don't see people taking the deodorant and you know, swiping her across their forehead, they focus on areas that smell. So why, why does some sweat smell stronger than it does in other parts of the body? Yeah, so a couple of reasons. So one is that there's actually different kinds of sweat glands. And the sweat glands that are in your armpit and your groins, they actually develop during puberty and they create sweat that is more stinky than other sweat. And then the second thing is that a lot of the smell of sweat isn't the sweat at all. It's actually bacteria feeding on your sweat and then excreting chemicals that are actually stinkier than just regular unexcreted sweat, undigested sweat. Um, and since we each have our own sort of personal microbiome of flora and fauna bacteria on our skins, everybody's got their own unique sweat smell. And if you have, say, hair in your pits, you're more likely to develop that bacteria than a part of your body where you don't? No, actually, I don't think that the hair matters. It's just that where you grow hair happens to be the same places where those uh, different sweat glands happen to be. Okay. Why do some people sweat more than others, Dr. Raj? So that's a complex mix of genetics and the environment. You're actually born with as many sweat glands as you're gonna have all your life, um, but then they develop differently depending on how hot and humid it is, depending on how much cooling your body needs. So the average person sweats about a liter a day. But if you're in a really hot and humid environment, you can sweat one to two liters per hour. Um, and about 5% of people have an actual medical condition called hyperhidrosis. And that is just excessive sweating, sweating more than what it takes to cool your body's core temperature. A lot of times they end up having really sweaty hands and feet to the point where it can actually disrupt their lives. You know, they can't use touch screens. They don't want to, um, you know, shake hands, things like that. And how do antiperspirants and deodorants work to control sweating? So two different things. Deodorants work basically by killing off the bacteria that digest your sweat and then make, it, make smelly uh, chemicals. And they do that by being just slightly acidic, um, which impedes the growth of the bacteria on the skin. Antiperspirants are a little bit different. They use aluminum compounds. And what they do is basically constrict the pores so that not as much sweat ends up on the surface of your skin. Um, one thing about antiperspirants, you know, a lot of people put them on right after the shower or right before they go to the gym or right before they go to the stampede, maybe. Uh, <laughs> they don't work as well that way. They work better if you apply them to dry skin sort of the night before. Um, so, and you, you know, so you don't sweat them off right away. And then the other thing that a lot of people ask me about antiperspirants is about staining their clothes, you know, sweat stains on their clothes. Um, those are actually a combination of the salts and proteins and oils from your sweat, plus the aluminum compounds in your antiperspirants or deodorants. So that's usually what does it. So if someone's bothered by their sweat, what can they do? Botox, I know, is an option. Yeah, the big thing is talk to your doctor because we want to make sure of a couple things. We want to make sure it's not a medical issue like a thyroid problem or a medication side effect. We want to see if you've got hyperhidrosis. Um, and we want to make sure that you don't have night sweats. 
excessive sweating while you're sleeping is its own thing. And there's a whole lot of medical conditions that can go along with that that we want to rule out as well. The other thing is, yeah, your, your doctor can offer things like Botox injections, but also there are prescription strength antiperspirants that you can try as well. Sometimes they mm. irritate the skin, but they work really, really well. And there are also surgical options as well, where you actually sever the nerves, just the ones that, that cause sweating in a specific area, like your armpits or your hands. Wow. Okay, before I let you go, at the start of the conversation, you mentioned that not all animals sweat in order to cool themselves off. So how do they keep cool? Yeah, so there's two different ways. There's sort of behavioral things that you can, that, that animals can do. You know, a desert animal might hide in their den for the hottest part of the day. If you've ever seen squirrels or dogs sort of, you know, flopped out with, with their belly on the ground or on a tree trunk or a boulder, that's called spluting. And that's actually, they're doing it to decrease their core body temperature, to put their warm belly up against some cool cement or something like that. And as for biological solutions, you know, they're, most animals will use evaporative cooling, but some don't, you know, like elephants, they lose a lot of heat out their big floppy ears. Those radiate the heat away. And then other animals do use evaporative cooling, but they just don't sweat very well or as much, like horses and even dogs can sweat. Um, but dogs mostly use evaporative cooling by panting, right? It's a different fluid, it's saliva, and it's being evaporated off a hairless part of their body, which is their tongue. Birds, some birds, actually use a different fluid. They excrete liquidy poop onto their featherless legs and feet to cool down, to use evaporative cooling that way. So, you know, suddenly sweating doesn't seem so bad. <laughs> I might try the spluting to cool myself off. I can assure you I will not be following <laughs> in the footsteps of the birds. Thank you, Dr. Raj. Stay cool.